what we'll do now is to extend our uh, basic model of Slack in different ways. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is to um, split our, ma our market for services into two markets. And so we'll have a labor market in which households um, sell their labor and firms buy labor. Firms will use the labor to produce services and then we'll have a product market where the services produced by firms are sold to households. Uh, so instead of having one big market where uh, services are directly sold and all households being self-employed, now we have two different markets and we introduce also firms in the model. Uh, and the firms, they are the ones who transform labor into services. Um, so the advantage of having two markets, a labor market and uh, a product market, uh, so there are several. Um, so first of all, it's more standard. Uh, many micro models are structured like that with a labor market, firms doing the production and a, and a product market. Second, it allows to separate between a price of services and the wage of labor. You know, in, in our basic model, price and wage are just the same thing because services are really labor services. Uh, but now we can have price of services and we can have the, the wage uh, for labor that are separate. It allows us to separate between product market tightness and um, labor market tightness. Uh, and it will allow us to introduce also uh, a few more shocks uh, at the level of the firm. So for instance, a technology shock that affects the firm's production function, then we can study like and these are fairly common uh, shocks in macro, although we don't really see them in the real world, but at least they are uh, shocks that typically uh, feature in macro models. Now we can introduce that once we've introduced uh, firms. Uh, so these are, these are the advantage of extending our basic model to a true market model. So what's the, uh, what's the structure of that model? Uh, so a lot of pieces are going to be exactly the same as in the basic model, but the only difference is that we'll have to introduce uh, firms. So if we start from households, uh, on the household front, a lot will be um, exactly the same. So if we have households, uh, so what do they do? So we know that they are going to, on the consumption uh, front, nothing really changes, so they are going to consume services, they are going to hold and value real wealth so consumption of services will denote it C as usual uh, the real wealth of the households M over P where M is um, the amount of money that they hold and P is the price level. Um, so that doesn't change. Um, now, the one thing that's going to be different is that instead of um, supplying services to a product market, here households are going to supply labor to the labor market. Um, but something that's common is that they're going to supply labor completely inelastically. Um, we'll, you know, we'll just have an amount of labor uh, that's going to be fixed, that's supplied uh, to the market. Uh, and this captures the fact, of course, that labor force participation is something that moves very slowly over time and that doesn't seem to respond um, to uh, business cycles. Uh, it's something that's determined by a longer term factor. And here, because we're building a business cycle model, will keep labor, you know, this labor force participation uh, fix. So actually, we should call that this. So we have uh, So um, the households uh, provide a labor force participants and the amount, the number of labor force participants, we'll call it H. So that's what's going on uh, on the household side. Oh, something I should say is that the, the utility function is not going to change at all, so I should uh, flag it here.
So that's the same as before. It's going to be u of c m over p, and it's going to be k over 1 plus k. This is just for reference, c epsilon minus 1 over epsilon plus 1 over 1 plus k m over p epsilon minus 1 over epsilon. So this, this uh, is not going to change. All right, so then, so the household is going to now interact with two different markets. Um, it's going to interact with uh, a labor market and a product market. So let's start with a, uh, with a labor market. And then we'll also have a product market. And we'll detail uh, in a second how um, these markets operate. Right, so uh, to the labor market, what the household is going to send is that uh, the household is going to send to the labor market the H labor force participants. So these guys are going to come to go to the market and try to work. What you get back in exchange, while the labor of force is going to be paid, so the household is going to get some income from that, and the real wage uh, will denote it by uh, W. So the income uh, here comes uh, from uh, work on the labor market. On the product market, the, well, the household is going to do two things. So first, of course, we'll have uh, the households to buy uh, products. It's going to do visits to different shops, exactly like before. And of course, the household will have to pay. Uh, well, I guess so it's going to do visits, I guess. And then uh, what's going to get back is uh, output products, services, uh, quantity Y is going to be purchased uh, exactly like before. Um, and exactly like, you know, we'll see that the product market, the same structure as in the basic model. So uh, that uh, amount of products that bought by the household will be split between what's consumed, which we denoted by C, and then uh, some products that are used just for matching. Okay, so that's uh, what happens here. And then in addition, now we'll have a new, uh, we have the new ele element of the model is that on the other side uh, of these markets, we have firms. And so uh, these firms, what they are going to do is that they are going to uh, hire workers by posting vacancies. And the number of workers that are going to be hired will be denoted by L. By posting vacancies and um, vacancies, we are going to denote them. So everything that has to do with the labor market, which is kind of the new market here, we're going to use the same notation as what we had before, but we're going to put a hat on it. Um, so visits were V. Uh, and so vacancies are going to be v hat. Posting vacancies, uh, the workers um, they are paid the real wage W, um, and then The workers are used for production, and uh, the amount of production um, that then sold uh, to the market is what we denote by K. So K, do you remember, in our basic model was um, the capacity uh, of the economy, so the amount of service that could be produced. So here's the production by uh, firms we denoted by K, and that's what's going to be sold. Uh, that's what's going to be sold on the product market. And of course, not everything is going to be sold. We'll have some slack um, also. Um, so workers are used for production. Um, the products 
which again, we can think of them as services. They are sold at price P. <clears throat> so the workers are paid a real wage uh, W. Oh, actually, um, yes, I imagine it's going to be, so I think it's going to be easier to W to make W or nominal wage. And the real wage would be W over P. That's going to be simpler. So this is a nominal wage W. Right, and then you'd have uh, price P, K is going to be the potent, uh, you know, the capacity uh, of production, products are sold at price P, okay. Uh, so this is about it for the firms. Yes, and well, we'll see that we'll see that when we detail the labor market. Of course, recruiting and posting vacancies is not free. So something we should flag is that uh, some of the firm's uh, employees uh, use for production for um, recruiting instead of production. So you can think of them as, say, human resource workers. That will be the firm. Uh, and uh, and in fact, so the number of producers, we'll call them uh, N. And L will be the total number of workers, including the recruiting workers. So here I could actually say, just to introduce that notation already, N workers are used for production K. And uh, some of the firm's workers that are used for recruiting, it's L minus N recruiters. So we'll see that. Uh, this is a bit um, all the notation that we need. Okay, so this is our, uh, these are our firms here. And so what do the, how do the firm interact um, with our market? So on the labor market, the firm is going to send the uh, vacancies, which we said we'll call V hat, to get workers. And in exchange, the firm is going to get L. Through the matching process, we'll see that we'll get L workers that are going to work at the firm. And then here on the, uh, on the product market, so the firm is going to have a capacity K. Uh, so these are possible services that could be purchased. Um, and so of course, not all of them would be purchased, but these are, are going to be present on the product market. And then in exchange for all of these, for services that are sold, um, the firm is going to get a price P. And, uh, you know, and, and we'll see that of course, households are going to maximize their utility and firms are going to, uh, maximize their profit. So this is, uh, this is our structure with most of the notations that we'll, uh, that we'll need to use. And I, as before, um, you know, our model here is going to be static. Um, so this is just, a, you know, it's just one period. So this hasn't changed. Um, right, and of course, something I should have flagged, but that I, I guess should probably be obvious is that this product market and labor market, of course, they'll be organized around the matching function. This would be matching markets, uh, which, you know, obviously that's the type of model that we are building here. Uh, so there'll be matching going on, both on the labor market and on the product market.